Hi there! Welcome to Victory Green Hills. We exist to honor God and make disciples. My name is Joe Ashpa O'Neill and I'm privileged to be one of your pastors here. If you have questions on how to get connected and be part of our local church, just visit the link in the description box. God bless you as you listen to God's Word today. Right, we are already on the second week of our series, Generation We. Last week, I preached in our afternoon service uh, with Pastor Bojo. And I said this, uh, the reason why we are doing this, not only because tuwing Campus Sunday lang natin pinag-uusapan ang young people or the next generation, but it's because this is who we are. This is the stewardship that God has given us. And for us, to be able to fulfill the mission that God has given us, it takes the collaboration and support of each generation. That's why I believe that the message that God has for us is not only for our young people, but even for the parents, for the adults. In short, it's for every one of us. And so again, I'm very excited. And today we're going to look at the Word of God in the second letter of Paul to Timothy. And Yung pinagkaiba nito, no, we had our, recently we had a series about leadership wherein we look at the letter of Paul to Timothy, the first Timothy, and may pinagkaiba talaga siya. In the first Timothy, it was more of uh, Paul giving instructions to Timothy about how to become a leader, how to lead the church during that time. But and then and there, there was a sh sudden shift. When we look at the letter of Paul in second Timothy, this was actually considered as the farewell message message of Timothy. It's because during this time, he was imprisoned again in Rome and medyo na-anticipate niya na, na soon enough, he will already be executed. So pag nakita natin mamaya yung word ni God, in the letter of Paul to Timothy, we can see here how personal it is that you would actually notice and feel kung ano yung gustong sabihin ni Paul to Timothy or to the next generation. Now, before we dive into the word, can I ask everyone right now, can we all just bow down our heads and let's pray? Lord, we thank you, God. Again, for this opportunity that you have uh, given us, Lord God, truly we are humbled, Lord, na mabigyan kami ng opportunity to receive your word, to hear your word, Lord God. I pray that from the beginning up until the end of this preaching, Lord God, our hearts will be aligned to you. Our hearts will be in the position of worshiping you, of uh, uh, glorifying you and honoring you, O Lord. And I pray that you will give us the grace, Lord. Open our hearts and give us the grace, Lord, to be able to be faithful and obedient to your call for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Now, this is what um, we can notice. As we read later on, 2 Timothy chapter 1, the one thing that's very obvious, especially in chapter 1, is this aspect of multi-generation. You, you would see there that Paul mentioned about Lois, the grandmother Eunice, the mother of Timothy. Even Paul also mentioned his own ancestors. And later on, we will see why is this so important no? sa letter ni Paul na in-include niya itong mga bagay na to. But here's my proposal for all of us as we dive into the Word. I want to encourage all of us to have these two perspectives, okay? So first is this, for the now generation or for the adults, okay, for the parents out there, I want all of us to realize this or even remember that we were also once students or we were also once the young people or the next generation. Maybe for some of you, no, nare-reminis nyo na ngayon, yung mga times na yon na kayo pa yung mga young people, kayo pa yung next generation during those times. So that's the first one. Second is this, for our young people, for the next generation, I want you guys to have this perspective that one day you will also become um, the now generation, meaning to say you are no longer the young ones, okay? Darating at darating yung time, although merong ano yan, no? may moment yan ng medyo in denial pa tayo minsan, di ba? Na parang, uh, adult na ba ako talaga? Or am I really leading other people already or the next generation already? But yes, that time will come as well. So those two perspectives, I want to encourage uh, uh, all of us to have that as we dive into the Word because I believe having those perspectives will actually allow us to understand more the Word of God for us 
today. You know, I remember uh, looking at the first perspective that we have. I also remember when I became part of the youth ministry. I was in college. I was a second year college nursing student when I got saved. And then I became part of a uh, local church during that time. During that time, it was Victory New Manila pa. Okay, yung school ko kasi was Trinity University of Asia. So sa tapat lang nun, walk lang uh, across, and na yung Victory New Manila during that time. Um, nung nasave ako and became part of the community, I really felt, wow, ako yung pinakabata. <laughs> okay, I think it, uh, it went on for many years kapag sa small group namin, mas madalas yung mga uh, seniors na, mga, uh, mga third year college students yung nakakasama ko. So, ang dami kong ates and kuya. Tulad nga na sabi ni Pastor Francis kanina, uh, I'm the eldest sa aming magkakapatid. So when I became part of the campus ministry when I was a student, feel na feel ko talaga, sobrang appreciate ko na, wow, ang dami kong ate and kuya. So you know what, it, uh, it went along for uh, many years, this and that. But later on, na-realize ko, grabe, ay, ako na yung ano, ate na ulit ako. <laughs> okay, yung, yung mga nakakasama ko na sa campus ministry, yung mga students na nililid ko na, later on nakita ko, oh, wow, these are high school students, especially in our campus ministry here in Green Hills. Marami po tayong mga high school. You know, sometimes, no, as the next generation, minsan we tend to have that um, mindset na yung mundo umiikot sa atin, na we are forever young. But again, time will come that we will all also lead a next generation with us. I remember I actually had that conversation with Shelo. Shelo is now one of our faithful volunteers that's helping us in our audio and tech. Di lang natin siya nakikita sa camera, no? But Shelo and also Pat Valiente, our worship leader, also helping out in our tech. One time we had the conversation backstage. Tapos uh, nagtatawanan kami kasi sabi ko kila Shelo and Pat, guys, Guess what? Kayo na yung mga ate ngayon. <laughs> dati nasa kids church sila. Dati they're also part of our ENC na sila yung dinedisciple, nililid namin. But now, they are the ones leading already other students. So that picture already is something that's very big and something that we need all of us to understand. So as we dive into the word, mama, may makikita natin, ah okay, yung word pala na to is not only for the now, but also in the coming years of our lives. Paul said in verse 12, 2 Timothy chapter 1, sabi niya dito, but I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Verse 13, follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Now, we can see here that Paul mentioned about what was entrusted to him and also about the good deposit that was entrusted to Timothy. So let's answer this question. What is this good deposit that Paul was talking about in, uh, in these verses? In other words, we can actually ask the question as, uh, as we go to the word today, what do we actually deposit in the lives of the next generation? Ano ba yung dapat nating i-deposit sa buhay nila and how are we gonna do it in uh, first timothy in second timothy chapter 1 verse 3 it says here paul said i thank god whom i serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience conscience as i remember you constantly in my prayers night and day now Sino dito no, medyo nahiya ka nung nabasa mo or narinig mo yung verse na to. Why? Paul said he constantly pray for Timothy every day, night and day. Wow, the very first thing that we could deposit in the lives of our next generation is this, prayers. How many of you here, you believe that prayers are powerful? How many of you here, you have already experienced uh, answered prayers in your life or you have already witnessed an answered prayer in the lives of other people? Isn't it encouraging and faith building every time we see and witness all these things happen because of the power of God? Now, when it comes to our next generation, when it comes to the people around us, we should always, constantly do this. We pray for the people around us. Most importantly, we pray for the next generation. 
you know, I hope and I encourage that in your prayer list, no, I know we also have our prayer uh, request or our prayer, um, ang tag dito, yung mga list natin, mga personal faith goals natin. But I hope, no, dun sa prayer list nyo, merong section dyan about the next generation. Whether yung mga kilala nyo na talaga, maybe mga anak nyo or mga pamangkin or mga pinsan, whatever. Diba? But I hope that you have that portion in your prayer list that you actually pray for the next generation. You know, I remember this story. I became part of Victory Green Hills after, I think it was already late in 2008 or 2009. But Victory Green Hills started in 2007. Okay? So wala po ako nung nag-start talaga yung Victory Green Hills. But I would hear stories from our pastors, from our leaders, how our campus ministry was birthed in prayers. Naalala ko yung mga uh, stories like prayer nila Pastor Joash and Pastor Bojo that they would actually go to uh, PUP San Juan. They would walk around the campus. They would walk around the city and they would just declare. And they would just pray. Ang uh, tawag natin doon, no? prayer walk. Yan, maybe for some of you, no, siyempre di lang natin magawa nga yung ECQ, but maybe, okay, kapag medyo lumuwag na ulit tayo when you go out, no, pwede niyong gawin rin yun. Pag na, may nadaanan kayong mga schools, may, da, may nakita kayong mga young people, I hope that you would remember to pray. Pray for the campus, pray for the young people. Our campus ministry here in Green Hills was actually birthed in prayers. I would remember when we were praying for San Juan during that time, um, ang kasama ko niyan si Tita Emmy. Okay, we would uh, walk around barangays in San Juan because Tita Emmy has been a, a, a resident on, of San Juan for I think simula ata ng pinanganak si Tita Emmy, no? I, I don't remember na pero matagal na talaga. So si Tita Emmy would tell me stories about San Juan, tong barangay na to dati, this and that. And then we would just declare the word of God. We would sow seeds of prayer. I remember also our students would do that. Uh, ang tawag namin doon, no? Um uh, power evangelism. So we we would evangelize in the streets of uh, San Juan in different barangays and also we would sow prayers. Okay. And you know what? What happened? Of course, if you would remember, especially during the uh, leadership of Pastor Dave in our campus ministry, our, our campus re ministry really grew. Okay, Not just in numbers. We're not after numbers, but we are after the lives of the students being transformed. And that's why we are very, very um, grateful for that what God has done in the lives of our young people because we believe those were birthed because of prayers another story that I want to share to all of us I remember this I think I was a, a fresh grad during this time and then see si Pastor Dave okay siya kasi yung kuya kuya ko when I was in college he showed me this picture an old pamphlet Okay, uh, basta ano siya, prayer request siya or prayer list siya. Siguro sa isang prayer meeting siya ginamit. And then pinakita niya yun sa akin, sabi niya, Nikki, look at this. Look at the campus na nandyan na pinagpe-pray nila even before pa. It was said there, pray for Trinity College of Quezon City. So yung Trinity kasi, no, before siya maging Trinity University of Asia, ang pangalan niya before was Trinity College. We got so encouraged. It's because for many years already, there have been people have been praying for that campus. And we were so overwhelmed. Wow, we're actually the answered prayers for someone else's prayer. Okay. We have to realize that Pastor Francis talked about this last week. I, I, I remember that, that we're actually, you know, uh, a product of someone else's prayer. Guess what? As the now generation, or for those, for all of us who have been hearing, who are hearing or listening to this message, all of us can sow prayers for the next generation and for the campuses to come. Let's deposit those prayers now and until, alam mo yun, hanggat kaya pa natin mag -pray. let's continue on praying. Now, let's continue in verse 4, it says here, As I remember your tears, I long to see you. Again, you see how personal Paul was in this letter. That I may be filled with joy, I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that was dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure it dwells in you as well. The, un the next thing that we can deposit in the lives of the next generation is this, it's faith. 
Okay? We deposit faith in the lives of the next generation. Faith through shared lives. Okay? Uh, as we all know, Paul was like a father to Timothy. Paul also and Timothy has been together in uh, mission trips. Okay? Nakasama ni, ni Paul si Timothy, binitbit niya. Okay, si Timothy, so that he, uh, Timothy will also be trained, will be equipped, and will also be able to evangelize to other people. And alam natin to, no, the life of Paul wasn't easy. Okay? Marami siyang pinagdaanan na pagsubok, marami siyang persecutions or oppositions na pinagdaanan. And Timothy was also able to witness that. Not only to witness that, but I believe all Timothy himself have also experienced that, especially nung kasama niya si Paul. Now you see, in the lives of our next generation right now, and I think many would agree with this, you would see this in social media, how our young people right now, they want authenticity. Okay? They want raw. Okay? Ay, gusto nila yung authentic ka, gusto nila yung honest ka. And you know what? I believe no, one of the blessings uh, in the pandemic right now is having that opportunity to our with our students to be close to them, especially in our homes right now. Now, let me just say this. Alam ko sometimes my tension, alam ko sometimes my awkwardness, but I believe it's also the way of God for us to be together. Okay, yung makita talaga natin, yung isa't isa, face to face when we are in, alam mo yan, when we are pressured, when we are in times na hindi talaga tayo, okay. You know, yung vulnerability, and honesty with each other happens. That's why, you know, instead of looking at the negative effects of the pandemic, I know there are a lot of it, and we are experiencing that. But I want to also encourage us to also look at the open doors that God is giving us, especially at our homes right now. I, I think it would be for our parents right now, yung a sense of vulnerability or honesty na, you know, sometimes nagkakamali talaga tayo, uh, ngayon, wala pa naman po akong asawa, no? but again, I have lots of siblings. I have six siblings. We're all at home. I sorry, may isa kong sister. She's in, in Japan right now studying. But the five of them, okay, nakasama ko sa house. And minsan talaga, nakikita nila yung mga uh, flaws ko din, na init ng ulo, this and that, or <laughs> parang nasisigawan, ganyan. But sometimes, I really have to, you know, be vulnerable to them and say, I'm sorry, I did this, okay, and make it up to them. And so, I believe that honesty and authenticity will help our students to see the work of God in our lives. We deposit faith to them, not by passing it on to them, because as we all know, hindi naman po napapasa ang faith. Tama ba? Hindi natin, mas, hindi natin pwede sabihin na, oh, dahil kristyano na ako, kristyano ka na din, kasi ipapasa ko lang to sa'yo. No, but actually our faith being lived out would give an opportunity for the young people for also for them to ponder, to think about, and hopefully that they would also encounter Jesus Christ themselves, that one day they will also make that decision to follow Jesus Christ. So it's good that we have personal faith because we need that. Okay? And we also made that decision personally to follow Jesus Christ. But living out our faith with our deeds, with our words, with our actions, even actually with our flaws, you know, being vulnerable about it. I believe that would give us an opportunity for our young people to see, ganito pala mag-work si Jesus Christ sa buhay ng isang tao. Sino ba tong Jesus Christ na to na wino-worship ng mga magulang ko? Sino ba tong Jesus Christ na to na uh, uh, wino-worship or pinagpepreyan ng mga ate, mga kuya ko? I want to know this Jesus Christ as well. And again, our prayer is that one day, they themselves will make a decision to follow Jesus Christ. You see, multi-generational faith is possible. Not because of imposing our faith to them, but through teaching. You see, in Je Deuteronomy 6, verses 5 to 7, it says there, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. 
Okay? It's very clear in the Bible that we shall teach them diligently. Okay? In other version uh, or translation in the Bible, sabi doon, pag nasa bahay tayo, pag nakaupo tayo, let's talk about it. Let's talk about our faith. Let's talk about the Word of God. So you see, when we deposit our faith or we deposit our uh, the Word of God through shared lives, our young people, alam mo yan, yung parang, uh, para silang bank, okay, yung puso nila, parang napupuno yung, uh, yung puso nila ng mga salita ng Panginoon and one day our prayers that it will click sa buhay nila. Now one day they would realize, ay ito pala yung sinasabi ng parents ko. Ay ito pala yung faith na sina or si, ito pala si Jesus Christ na sinasabi sa akin ng mga ate, mga kuya ko. Right? We deposit faith in the lives of our young people. Let's continue on. Verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. What are other things that we can deposit in the lives of the young people? I believe it's this, affirmation. Okay? In other words, it could be encouragement. Okay? Paul would often encourage Timothy, especially during this time. Uh, Timothy, uh, as suggested with the verses and even in the other scriptures, na medyo timid si Timothy or he hates uh, confrontation. Eh, but then he's already a leader in the church and so Paul would often encourage him. You see, what can we learn from him? From, from Paul. We affirm not for the sake of pleasing them, but we affirm to confirm what God and the Holy Spirit has already given them, particularly the spiritual gifts that God has placed in their lives. Again, affirmation is also a form of emotional support or encouragement. You know, I remember this. In college, this is the time where I bloomed as a leader. Tawag nila sa akin noon ng mga professors ko, I'm a late bloomer. Kasi hindi naman talaga ako, you know, parang uh, yung, yun, ma, ma student council or ma lead. I also, I know, I'm, I'm, I have just a small uh, group of people, like yung classroom namin, yun na yun, I can lead there. But in a bigger scale, hindi talaga masyado. But during this time, I got saved when I was in college, and I remember my aunts, my kuyas, my leaders in the church during that time would call out that leadership potential in me. And during this time, hindi ko naman talaga nakikita yung sarili ko. Okay? And many of our young people today, they are actually like that. We see, we see ourselves differently. Tama ba? Most of the time, we see ourselves differently. But then, if we are, peop we are surrounded with godly people who has wisdom, who also has, uh, who, where also the Holy Spirit is at work sa, sa life nila, these are the people that can call out yung mga giftings na yan sa buhay natin. Kasi nandiyan na yan eh. It was given to us by the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, fan into flame the gift of God. Okay, later on we'll talk more about that. But as leaders, as spiritual leaders, as spiritual parents, we are actually to affirm the young people, the next generation, not for the sake of pleasing them, but to call out those giftings that God has given us. We deposit affirmation or encouragement to our young people. Last but not the least, what else? The most important thing, we deposit the gospel in the lives of the next generation. Verses 8 to 10, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling. Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages begun. Verse 10, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This is what I love about Paul. Not only in 2 Timothy, pero we will always notice this sa lahat ng letters ni Paul, sa mga epistles. He would always point back people on this particular letter, Timothy, always going back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Especially during this time na sobrang daming mga false teachers, corrupt teachers na iba yung sinasabi nilang 
gospel message. That's why Paul would consistently preach about the word of God, preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ, because this is the central message of what we preach and of what we live out. Sabi nga natin sa church or sa movement natin, Jesus, period. Okay. The gospel of Jesus Christ, most importantly, sana ito yung hindi natin ma-miss out. There are a lot of advices that we could give to the next generation. Uh, business advice, academic advice, relationship advice, and gustong-gusto nila yan. But I hope that these advices will always be anchored in the gospel. I hope and I pray na lahat itong mga bagay na to na sinishare natin sa kanila, ang foundation lagi niyan, yung gospel ni Jesus Christ. Most importantly, I pray that we will have that boldness to clearly share to them what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We have to remember that it's the power of God that is at work in our lives. It's the power of God, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that will transform the lives of our young people. That's where their life will um come from, yung ma-experience nila yung full life. That's where forgiveness will uh, come from. That's where their purpose will be anchored uh, to. It's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for the salvation, for the salvation of everyone who believes. A story of uh, recently, last June, we had our shift event. If you would realize, no, yung uh, kids' church natin, okay, pre-pandemic, we also have what we call the pre-teens, okay? Now that we are already more than a year in the pandemic, they are actually teenagers already. So, nagkaroon po kami ng online event via Zoom. It's called... Um, uh, we called it a shift event wherein we help these young people na nag-transition ngayon as teenagers to be part of a community natin dito sa campus ministry. And our hope and our prayers that they will be disciples, especially that they are now in a new season or in a new journey as teenagers. I said this because this is actually in partnership with the parents. Kaya, I believe, no, there are a lot of creative ways on how we can deposit the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lives of our young people. It can be through this, by supporting, okay, yung mga events na ginagawa natin for our young people. So, I, I pray and hope, no, na for the coming uh, events pa nagagawin natin in the campus ministry, that we would get support from our parents, na, especially in talking to our young people or vision casting to them how important these things are. Are. Another story in our Every Nation Campus staff, okay? Alam naman po natin, no, na hindi lang Green Hills yung Every Nation Campus. In fact, it's all uh, around the Philippines and even in other nations of the world as well. But in ENC TAF, they, they did this outreach event for our athletes. You know, one of the things, okay, or one of the people na have been affected by the pandemic are our athletes. Marami sa kanila nawala ng pag-asa or shattered dreams na they wanna be professional uh, players ganyan uh, in the sports that they they are into. But then, adaming naging hopeless, this and that. But our ENC Taft um, campus ministry was able to reach out to them. And good news is this, they were able to preach the gospel. Some of them are all now being discipled. Some of them have gone through one-to-one -one already. Praise God for that. You know, there are a lot of ways on how we can deposit and preach the gospel to our young people. Now, that's how we deposit. Okay, That's what we deposit and how we deposit uh, these things in our young people. The next question is this. What do we do with what was deposited in us? Siyempre, may deposit sa atin, pero anong gagawin natin sa mga bagay na to na dineposito sa atin? Verses 6 to 7, again, I, sabi ni Paul, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. First thing is this, fan into flame. Okay, fan into flame. For the young people right now, now that this, you know, our, 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 our now generation have deposited this, this to us, what are we going to do about this? Fan into flame. Keep ablaze, stir up these giftings that God has given us. 
Okay? I remember Pastor Bojo said this when we had our shift event. Sabi niya, you know, discipleship, it's two-way. Okay? There are people who will reach out to us, but also at the same time, we also have to make ourselves ab- available to be discipled. We also have to make ourselves, young people, we have to make ourselves available to be coached, to be mentored by those people who, who wants to help us, who wants to guide us, or who wants to lead us in our walk with God. Fan into flame the gift of God. There are things in our lives na hindi natin agad nakikita, na meron pala tayong potential dito. And let's allow those people that God has brought in our lives to help us, to guide us, okay? To stir up itong mga giftings na binigay sa atin ni Lord. For God gave us not of spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. What else? What do we do with what was deposited in us? Do not be ashamed, but share the suffering. Okay? Let us not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord Jesus Christ, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Let's not be ashamed that we have a relationship with Jesus. Let's not be ashamed of what Jesus Christ has done for us. You see, the challenge right now uh, in our young people, and you know, I think many of you would agree, we, there are, there's so much fire in our hearts, especially when it comes to social injustices. And I'm all for that. You know, I myself, meron din akong mga uh, burden in my heart na we have to do something about this. We have to fight for this. Even if we should lay down our lives for this cause. And our young people are so into this uh, worthy cause, right? But here's something that I want all of us to realize and understand. As we look at the cross of Jesus Christ, I hope that we realize that there's actually no greater cause than what Jesus Christ has already accomplished. Jesus Christ himself laid down his life for each and every one of us. Even for those people that we hate. Even for those people na, alam mo, nag-isip na dapat hindi siya ganito, dapat ganito yung ginagawa niya. We have to fight for this. Even for that person. Jesus Christ died for that person so that person can have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. You know, this is the greatest cause, worthy cause, that Jesus Christ himself accomplished. But this is my question. Are we willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel? If we're willing to lay down our lives for other things or to fight for other things, I hope all the more we will have that you know, fire in our hearts to lay our lives for the sake of the gospel. Are we willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel? Are we willing to receive you know, mockery, sometimes oppositions, only because you preach the gospel, only because you share the, the love of God to these people, only because you stand in your ground for what the word of God is telling us? You see, sometimes ang wrong idea natin when it comes to Christianity is this, dapat hindi nagsasuffer kapag kristyano ka. Dapat walang challenges, kaya minsan no, kapag nagkakaroon na ng suffering, parang napapakwestiyon tayo, akala ko ba, asan si Lord? Bakit, ba't may suffering? Bakit may mga problema or challenges na pinagdadaanan? You know what? That's not biblical. Because the Bible tells us there will be suffering. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, take heart. Okay, in this world, you will be persecuted, you will experience suffering, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's why if we know who Jesus Christ is, if we know the gospel, if our lives and our souls is anchored to what Jesus Christ has done for us, I believe by the grace of God, we will be able to say, Lord, I'm willing to lay down my life for the sake of the gospel. Lord, I'm willing to suffer if that's what will entail, Lord God, in this life for the sake of the gospel. Okay. I'm not saying na KJ si Lord or gusto lang tayong pahirapan ni Lord. But what I'm trying to say is this, it's part of our lives as Christians. If we read the Bible, people of God have experienced suffering. If we look at the history of the church, we have experienced suffering. But again, by the grace of God, we can endure. 
by the grace of God, one day we will see and we will hear from the Lord, good and faithful servant. You have fight the good fight. You have fought the good fight of faith. Next is this, who saved us, verse 9, and called us to a holy calling. What do we do with what was deposited in us? Live out your calling. Young people, listen to me. God has given you a specific calling and a specific purpose. All of us, God has a purpose for our lives. And we are called to live it out for the honor and glory of God alone. Let me Repeat that again. We are called to live out our calling, the purposes that God has given us for the glory and honor of God alone. Why did I say that? Because that's what will set us apart. Many people in the world, they will live out their passion, their purpose, you know, but not for the honor and glory of God. But as the children of God, as the church, there's only the, all the things that we do, it's only for the glory and honor of God. Be faithful, obey what God has called us to do. You see, there's a very big difference between the world's definition of success and God's definition of success. God's definition of success, it's not always you're the number one, you're, you, you uh, always recognize, means an hindi, okay? But I believe as we are becoming faithful and obedient to the call of God, then I believe that's already success in the eyes of God. Now, as we do our best to honor God and to give glory to Him, I believe that's already, you know, a fulfillment of the call and the purpose of God in our lives. Story that I want to share, if you guys have been um, following the Olympics, okay, you've heard of uh, this person already. Her name is Sydney McLaughlin. She's an Olympian, a gold medalist. I, I, I believe today is her birthday also. She turned a 22 already and i saw this the instagram post niya and this was last june when she hit a world record okay sa uh, hurdles okay sa sport ng hurdles sabi niya dito i could feel this meet uh, this meet was going to be something special but man weeks like this are some of the hardest in a track athlete's life the mental strain of preparing for the rounds in order to solidify your spot spot is heavy enough but the amount of weight the lord took off my shoulders is the reason i could run so freely yesterday my faith was being tested all week from bad practices to three false start delays to meet to a meet delay i just kept hearing god look at this just focus on me it was the best race plan I could ever have assembled. I no longer run for self-recognition, but to reflect his perfect will that is already set in stone. I don't deserve anything, but by grace, through faith, Jesus has given me everything. Records come and go. The glory of God is eternal. Thank you, Father. Wow. This was June, okay, of, I believe of this year. Uh, she hit the record of 51.9 seconds. Recently, I think two or three days ago, she uh, uh, beat her best record also. I think it's now 50.46 or 51.46 seconds. Records come and go, but the glory of God is eternal. When we live out our calling, it's not for us, but it's for the glory of God. Last but not the least, I'm about to end already. What do we do with what was deposited in us? We guard the good deposit. That's what Paul said in verse 13. We guard the good deposit by following God's word and his sound teaching. Okay? There will be a lot of times that the enemy would try to steal, kill, and destroy the purposes or the words of the word of God that was entrusted to us or that was the word deposited in us. There will be a lot of times that our faith will be shaken. There will be a lot of times that our faith will be challenged. But my prayer is this. Every time that you feel like giving up, always go back to the cross. Always go back to Jesus Christ. Always be reminded of the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. In fact, yun yung sabi doon, by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit that is in you. Ipaglaban mo. 
okay? Ipaglaban mo yung faith mo. Ipaglaban mo yung purposes na binigay ni Lord sa buhay mo because you are not alone. The Holy Spirit is fighting with you. The Holy Spirit that lives in you will empower you to live a victorious life. Pursue God no matter what. Pursue God's calling in your life no matter what. I remember that song, Capture Me by Victory Worship. As you pursue me, so will I pursue you. As you pursue me, Lord, so will I pursue you. You know, when we look at our times today, it's really difficult to reach out to the next generation. Okay? Especially sa mga challenges, limitations na meron tayo. But this is my prayer that we would embrace that we are called by God for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Wag na nating hintayin na matapos yung pandemic before we reach out to the next generation, before we do our part. Because God has called us now for such a time as this to pray for our young people, to deposit faith, to preach the gospel to them, for our young people to, ri- to rise up to live out our calling, to honor God and to glorify God for with every opportunity that He has given us. We are called for such a time as this. The mission stays the same. The mission continues and we all have a role to play. Let me pray for everyone right now. Lord, thank you so much for your word for us today. Lord, maraming salamat because first and foremost, it's your heart, Lord, that you are imparting to us, Lord, the heart of compassion towards our young people, the heart of compassion, Lord God, towards the young generation who some of them, Lord God, are veering away from faith or some of them are experiencing experiencing hardships and challenges in their lives and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go to. But Father, I pray even right now that you will visit them. They will have a visitation from you, from the Holy Spirit, and you will reveal yourself to them. And I pray, O Lord, that by the grace of God, they will respond to your call. They will respond to the gospel. And I pray for all of us, Lord, the now generation, the adults, those who have been entrusted with this mission, Lord. I pray that we will not give up on our young people. I pray, O Lord, that we will be so anchored in the gospel, Lord God. And it's the gospel that will compel us to not be ashamed, Lord God, to have compassion, Lord God, towards our young people. I pray that you will give us even creativity, O Lord, on how we can raise up the next generation to be our future leaders. Lord, thank you that at the end of the day, in all generation, our cry and our heart is this, that we would honor you and that we would glorify you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody say, Amen and Amen.